Today we will be narrating an action, thriller, crime movie, released in 2011, titled Blitz. This movie tells the story of a mysterious killer who targets the police and always publicizes it to the media. Sergeant Tom Brandt played by Jason Statham trying to uncover who is behind the murder. Make sure you watch this video to the end, for a better experience. The movie opens by showing a detective named Sergeant Tom Brandt, who wakes up from his sleep because he is disturbed by a noise from outside his apartment. It turns out that the sound comes from a group of naughty children who want to rob a car. Tom comes down from his apartment and beats them up with a hockey stick. Although Tom was a policeman, he wanted to act freely. However, because of this, Tom was called by his superior, who said that the report he would make later would determine the fate of Sergeant Brandt in the police force. Tom then stood up and said, if this is the only job Tom can do, if Tom is fired then there will be a lot of damage Tom will do. His boss chose to relent and left. Later in Tom's room, Tom was visited by Elizabeth. Elizabeth was one of his assisted members. Elizabeth came to report about the undercover mission she had just completed. Then Sergeant Tom was visited by another superior, who gave him a newspaper about the headlines on the front page, where Tom was the artist. However, Tom says not to believe what the newspaper says. Tom then defended himself by saying that the kids had knives, and threatened to hurt him, so Tom had to teach them a lesson. His superior lost the argument and left the room. Another time, Sergeant Tom came to accompany Inspector Robert, at his wife's funeral, Although Tom was a policeman who had no rules, Sergeant Tom could also be a good friend. Meanwhile elsewhere, a policewoman named Sandra Bates, was patrolling the streets, when suddenly a mysterious person approached her, and shot Sandra right in the neck, then ran away. The next day their office had a new member named Porter Nash. Porter was a sergeant who was promoted to inspector, and was tasked with replacing Inspector Robert who was on leave after the death of his wife. However, Porter was not welcomed by the other members. Meanwhile at Elizabeth's residence, she was visited by an acquaintance named John, who asked for her help while scared. John admitted that he and his friends last night had beaten people unconscious. Hearing that, Eli also promised to help him as long as the victim did not die. Elizabeth then asked Sergeant Tom for help, but Sergeant Tom, who was investigating the case at that time, then recommended Ellie to go to a detective acquaintance named Craig Stokes. Elsewhere, at the office of a newspaper, Harold Dunlop, a journalist received a call from someone, who claimed to have a clue regarding the police shooting case. The person said that he was targeting eight more policemen to be killed. The mysterious man deliberately called the journalist so that his actions would become famous and publicized. Still on the same day, the man shot another policeman who was sitting in a car. Because of the irregularities of the case, this also disturbed members of the police force. Inspector Porter then began to approach Sergeant Tom to familiarize themselves, so that they could work together. In the office, they began to track the bullets and weapons used, the testimony of witnesses who saw the perpetrator's face, and CCTV footage. While Sergeant Tom looked for clues in the field by visiting illegal firearms dealers, and street people who might have clues related to this increasingly crazy case. Tom then meets an acquaintance named Redner, a homeless man who makes money by selling information to the police. However, Redner is the wrong person to want to extort money from Tom. After a bit of torture, Redner finally opens up and reveals that a gym-goer once burned a police dog to post to YouTube, and said that it was an exercise. Hearing this, Tom went there to interrogate the manager, finally Tom got a name. Then Tom invited Porter to join the investigation. The two of them went to an apartment owned by Barry Weiss, suspected cop killer. They searched the residence but did not get anything. Sergeant Tom then remembers Barry's face, it turns out that Barry is the person he beat up at the pool table, a year ago. After that they came out of the apartment and met Barry who seemed to mock him. It made Tom almost sent Barry to the hospital. After that Tom told Porter to keep an eye on Barry, maybe because of the incident a year ago, making Barry have a grudge against the police. Because his house was visited by the police, Barry immediately got ready for the next plan. The man packed his things, put them in the trunk of a car parked elsewhere. Inspector Robert who was tired of being on leave chose to return to the office, and his request was granted even though Porter Nash had replaced him. On his way home, Barry followed Robert secretly. Barry entered the house by pretending to be a cable TV operator. Barry also managed to lure Robert to open the door to his apartment, and immediately Barry pointed a gun at Robert, but Robert quickly diverted his direction. 
They also fought inside the house. Robert who had taken a hammer tried to attack Barry, but unfortunately Barry was able to grab the hammer and hit Robert's head 11 times. After killing Robert, Barry casually watched TV in Robert's house. Barry also took a shower, took items that could be used, and finally left the scene while burning the apartment. After that, Barry also called a reporter and told him what he had just done, saying that at the scene of the fire there was a policeman who died with his head smashed by a hammer. Fortunately, the reporter had recorded their conversation, Barry then referred to himself as Blitz. The news made headlines in the newspaper, Sergeant Tom who had just come to the office was shocked, after being told that Inspector Robert had died. On the other hand, Redner looked for clues in the trash at Barry's apartment, their Redner found a clue, namely Barry's parking ticket. Redner then went there, searched the car, opened the trunk, and found the evidence. Realizing that he would not get any money if this information was given to Sergeant Tom, Redner immediately contacted Harold Dunlop, the journalist who wrote the story about Barry. Redner asked for $50,000, for the information he had, namely about Blitz's real name, and also the evidence that had just been found. Elsewhere, Sergeant Tom and Porter examined the items left over from the fire at Robert's house. Unfortunately, no fingerprints could be retrieved from the fire, but from the items, they both found pieces of clothing bearing the inscription Peacock Jim. Tom immediately sent officers to check if Inspector Robert was a member there. On the other hand, Elizabeth, who wants to help John, finally goes to see Craig Stokes, a detective recommended by Tom. Craig revealed that the victim of the beating committed by John and his friends was still alive. Elizabeth also asked the detective not to arrest John, because John was still a child. However, Craig asked for a reward for that, namely Craig wanted Elizabeth to accompany him to drink tonight. At the police station, Tom got a clue that Inspector Robert had never been a member at the gym. Of all that Tom only suspected that Barry Weiss was the culprit, so Tom asked for help from police officers to find Barry Weiss's data. Police records show that Barry is listed as a person who often causes trouble, and has been arrested several times by the police. Elsewhere, according to the agreement, Redner showed the evidence he found to Harold for $50,000. But when they checked the car, Barry saw it from a distance and felt that the secret was no longer a secret, so after the two of them left Barry immediately packed up everything, and left nothing there. Barry also followed the two of them to a bar, and when Redner counted the money in the toilet, Barry seemed to scare Redner. Redner said that he did not mention Barry's name to the reporter, but Barry replied, take it easy because I only killed the police. Redner who was scared to death said repeatedly that he did not mention Barry's name to the reporter. Barry pretended to leave, but quickly killed Redner by drowning him in the toilet, then took his money. Soon becoming a crime scene, Harrell is interrogated by Sergeant Tom and Inspector Porter. Harrell told them everything that happened, until he found Redner dead there. Harrell also told them about the car full of evidence, which was parked in a place. They both went straight to the car, but because Barry had moved all his belongings, the CCTV in the parking lot also did not work because the memory was full. At the office, Sergeant Tom made a list of all the officers who had arrested Barry. Tom got the name Sandra Bates, Barry's first victim who had apparently arrested Barry in a violent case. Tom also got another name, Teo Nelson, the man Barry shot while Teo was sitting in the car. They were both surprised when the other officer's name that came up was Inspector Robert, and then Elizabeth. They immediately ordered the troops to send officers to Elizabeth's house. Some time earlier, Elizabeth kept her promise to have a drink with Detective Craig. However, she did not realize that Barry was watching them. After the date, as Elizabeth was about to enter her house, Barry attacked from behind. Luckily the attack missed, Ellie gave a little resistance and they rolled over. When Barry was about to attack again, John came to ambush Barry, but John was defeated and died after Barry broke his neck, and Barry escaped after that. Elizabeth's house soon became a crime scene. Ellie told Porter that the culprit was a white adult. Tom was immediately convinced that it was Barry Weiss. The next day Tom and Porter searched Barry Weiss' apartment, and there they found that Barry had packed up and fled. The police then issued a wanted warrant and published a photo of Barry Weiss as a suspect. The police immediately made an arrest by going to the hotel where Barry Weiss was staying. Barry, knowing this, tried to escape. The chase involved many policemen. Barry who realized he couldn't run anymore, decided to surrender. Fortunately the other policemen quickly caught up before Tom who was already emotional did something to Barry. At the police station, Barry was taken to the interrogation room, where he was asked a few questions by Tom and Porter. However, in his arrogant way, 
Barry asked for a lawyer, asked for bread, and also said he wanted to update his status on Facebook. When Barry is with his lawyer, Sergeant Tom and Porter are reminded that they only have 48 hours to press charges, otherwise Barry will be released. Porter reveals that Barry is so smart that he managed to erase the forensic evidence, and left nothing at home, and at the hotel where he was staying. This makes them pessimistic because they don't have strong evidence, if they don't have evidence, then Barry will get out of prison laughing. Tom offers to solve the case without the law, which means Tom will take care of Barry himself, but Porter doesn't agree to do that. Tom then meets Barry in the interrogation room, reminding him of the incident one year ago, where Tom beat Barry to a pulp on the pool table. Tom deliberately provoked Barry's emotions at that time because Tom had a purpose. The next morning, because there was no evidence to arrest Barry, Barry was finally released, Barry arrogantly walked among the police officers, and acted like a celebrity. At his house, Barry prepared everything to do the action again. On the day of Robert's funeral, many police officers were present including Barry who disguised himself as a police officer came without the knowledge of the police. Because Tom had previously upset him in prison, it made Tom his next target. When Sergeant Tom left the cemetery, Barry followed him, Tom then went to a place, and Barry still followed him with a gun ready to use. Tom went to the roof of the building, where Barry was ready to shoot Brant in the head. But as Barry follows Inspector Porter, Tom appears from behind and attacks Barry with a crowbar. They duel, and you know who wins. Barry says that he will report them both, and make sure their faces are in the paper tomorrow morning. But what Barry doesn't realize is that Tom set him up so that the case could be solved with impunity. Tom then shoots Barry in the head using the same weapon he used to kill the police. That way, the case would be considered a police murder committed by Blitz. Tom and Porter then leave the scene, ensuring that Barry's case will not be solved, and the movie ends. So, what do you think about this movie? Maybe you can write it in the comments. If you liked this video don't forget to like it, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.